Are you guys aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America? Civil War, the latest film written and directed by Alex Garland. It's a film that's very successful in certain aspects and it has its heart in the right place, but does its main point come across as well as it should? Does it actually have all that much to say to begin with? And what in the world is that Texas and California alliance about? Let's discuss. This is a dystopian road movie set in a near future America as the country has split into different factions and descended into a civil war. In the midst of all of this, a group of reporters and photographers embark on a road trip in hopes of getting an interview with the president, encountering all kinds of people and dangers along the way. Now, I personally am a big fan of Alex Garland's sci-fi work. Ex Machina made me think about AI and humanity from different perspectives. Annihilation surprised me in many ways with its weird and haunting look at self-destruction. And Devs is simply one of my all-time favorite mind-bending miniseries that you should absolutely watch if you haven't. There are a few more wonderful sci-fi movies that he only wrote but didn't direct, which I would also recommend. And then there's Men, which is its own weird thing, and it's where it all went sideways for me. So when I heard that the filmmaker was somewhat coming back to the sci-fi genre with Civil War, I got excited, even though this isn't technically sci-fi, it's dystopian speculative fiction, but close enough. Here I was thinking, I can't wait for all of the interesting ideas and food for thought Garland is going to give me like he has with his previous work. So imagine my surprise and disappointment when Civil War turned out to be pretty thin thematically and the writer-director has intentionally left the vast majority of setup and background information off the screen, leaving his audience to fill in some major blanks. Don't get me wrong. I can't stand when a movie beats you over the head with its message. Being spoon-fed information and ideas is not something I'm looking for. But it's one thing to trust your viewers to draw their own conclusions, and it's a completely different thing to take the Civil War route and give them next to nothing. When the movie opens, we quickly find out that 19 states have seceded, the so-called Western forces are advancing on Washington, as the president is in his third term and turned the country into a dystopian dictatorship. The situation is dire, airstrikes have been used against American citizens, and you never know what kind of American you're going to encounter. Okay, what kind of American are you? that scene. It's definitely the standout. Jesse Plemons is fantastic and terrifying. It's so incredibly tense. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you would like to know how all of this happened, why are the factions divided the way they are, or even something basic like who is who in this situation, all of that is left to your interpretation, leaving the audience to project whatever they want onto this. And boy, do people project. If you are curious, it won't take long for you to find completely opposite takes from different people trying to decode what real life allegiances and events are implied here. But Alex Garland has stated repeatedly that he was not interested in making political statements or taking sides. That's not what this is about. And that's fine. I don't think being apolitical is the real issue here. But it is funny that for all of this movie's intentional political neutrality, the discussion around civil war has been nothing but politics. It's a product of our time, especially when it comes to online debate, but it's also the result of the setup of the film. It's set in America, it draws inspiration from how divided the country is and the volatile political climate. It's titled Civil War. It's getting released in the 2024 election year, which wasn't up to Garland, but still. But then it wants to remain aggressively neutral and expects people to leave the politics behind. I just 
don't think you can have it both ways in this case. The Texas-California alliance is the prime example of how impossible it is for people to take the politics out of the equation here. I've heard this over and over again. I am sure you have as well. What a ridiculous concept. This would never happen. What is this alliance even about? Here's Alex Garland himself to explain. The president is acting in a fascistic manner, made themselves into a three-term president and is being violent to his own citizens, that two states that have a different political position have said our political difference is less important than this. The counter to that is, if you cannot conceive of that, what you're saying is that your polarized political position would be more important than a fascist president. That's an insane position to hold. Well, when he puts it like that, it seems silly to question the politics of this alliance. But is this idea of putting differences aside to solve a bigger problem come through for most of the viewers? Clearly not. Just look at the discourse. And that's a problem. This idea ties right into the message of this entire movie. And because of what that message is, which we will get to in a minute, it's aimed at the wide audience. This isn't an obscure art piece left for the select, determined few to interpret. It's actually a pretty basic, straightforward concept, and if your wide target audience is missing it, it's a failure of storytelling and failure of communication. Garland very intentionally wants to say nothing because taking sides is the opposite of his point, but he definitely wants you to take a few things away from the movie. First of all, and this is where the movie undoubtedly succeeds, Civil War is clearly an anti-war war film. Garland has mentioned this in multiple interviews, emphasizing that most so-called anti-war films still manage to feel like they romanticize the situation through displays of heroism, camaraderie, the human spirit, and truly awful anti-war films are actually hard to come by. Well, there is nothing romantic about the images of a war-torn America here, even though the characters do find these random fleeting moments of stillness and beauty. As the journalists make their way across the country, the picture we see through their eyes is very bleak. Destruction, gunfire, torture, and so many dead bodies. We see people holding onto their resources and willing to kill for them. We see the destruction the war leaves behind. We see mistakes leading to devastating consequences. We see unimaginable cruelty. We witness an overwhelming siege at Washington, D.C. All of this is horrifying to watch and just as shocking to hear. The sound deserves its own special mention because every bullet, every explosion is loud to the point of being deafening. It's a very uncomfortable and upsetting film. Alex Garland directs the hell out of so much of this movie. It's tense, it's visually striking, and it's incredibly stressful to watch, making it an unforgettable cinematic experience. If there is one thing you definitely walk away with after seeing Civil War, it's that this is awful and it's absolutely not something you want to experience firsthand. Then again, war being terrible is not exactly the newest or the most groundbreaking idea. We know this. And when other context is removed, I am left here wondering what is the point beyond, yes, civil war is awful. And why are we setting this in what feels like present day America, taking inspiration from the political climate, if we're then not going to engage with it? Now, I do want to clarify, I am not saying that Garland needed to pick a political side with this movie. I am happy to see a movie that doesn't focus on politics. Though, to do that successfully, I think it should have either been removed further from the present day or not set in America at all. But as is, he did leave his viewers with very little to work with, considering that the main takeaway was supposed to be the need for dialogue and communication. Yes, the movie is meant to be a warning against not listening to each other and where that may lead, which is another thing he has talked about and something that has been echoed by the rest of the cast. Kirsten Dunst saying it's a cautionary fable 
table of what happens when people don't communicate with each other. Nick Offerman saying, we don't need to talk about who voted for who because we're all headed this way if we don't become better neighbors. This I don't think comes through all that well. I don't think Civil War is successfully having that conversation with the audience. I see a lot of people walking away confused about what the point of this movie even was, and the idea of talking to each other should not be a difficult concept to communicate. This is particularly curious when you frame the film through the neutral lens of war photographers, and characters are repeatedly discouraged from asking questions questions and having that dialogue. You don't know what side they're fighting for. Someone's trying to kill us. We are trying to kill them. In the video of Garland breaking down this sniper scene, he talks about how when things get extreme, the reasons why things got extreme are no longer relevant. But how can you say that when you're making a movie that's meant as a warning? Of course the reasons are relevant. They're relevant to the viewers who are watching this movie and who you're supposedly trying to caution against ending up in a situation like that. Sure, to those snipers, in that setting, it's irrelevant. But this isn't a documentary about the life of snipers, and at no point is this balanced out by anything else. This is also where I think that making the seemingly neutral lens of journalism the only point of view may not have been the best choice for the story. Part of the reason why we don't get much context or opinions is because we see the movie unfold through the eyes and cameras of these reporters and photographers. Here, once again, Garland isn't interested in engaging with the idea that journalism these days seems to rarely be neutral or the distrust people have when it comes to journalists. It's this classic classic idea of being a detached reporter, and at one point, a character says this. Once you start asking yourself those questions, you can't stop, so we don't ask. We record, so other people ask. Want to be a journalist? That's the job. Now, if we want to really talk about the ethics and complexities of this line of work, then let's do it. I'm all ears. But the movie yet again gives you the bare minimum. I really do wonder if there was more of all of this in the original script, if things got edited out, and there were rumors of the film being a lot longer than it ended up being. Because when you hear Alex Garland and the cast talk about the film, they all have a lot to say and they have strong opinions about what this film is communicating, but that just doesn't really come through on screen beyond broad ideas like war is awful and reporters are necessary. The writing feels thin. It feels like a missed opportunity. Its neutrality is being taken by many as just fear of alienating half of the potential audience. Meanwhile, the point was actually to take an anti-polarization stance and to encourage people to have conversations despite their differences before we get to the point of no return. This is what I was talking about when I said that in this case, it's a problem that the audience is missing the message. The themes of this movie aren't complex, and when we're talking about an anti-war and pro-conversation stance, when we're talking about the need for objectivity, these ideas are aimed at the widest possible audience and should be clear. When the reasons for this civil war are removed, when the viewers aren't given context or background, what we are left to focus on are the well-executed elements like the sensory overload of war sequences, how desensitized to the violence photojournalists have to be to do their job, and how terrifying terrifying Jesse Plemons can be, even though the trailer's iconic line, what kind of American are you, doesn't quite have the thematic impact you would expect in a film like this. Context would have helped to get ideas across here. Having some variety of point of view characters could have added some thematic complexity, and all of this could have been done without taking sides. As is, Civil War is a film that shines from the directing perspective, 
but is severely lacking when it comes to the writing. It struggles to communicate even its simple ideas to the audience, and it unfortunately doesn't have anything to offer beyond that surface level, broad commentary. It delivers some masterfully executed, incredibly tense and upsetting sequences, utilizing sound and still imagery very effectively. But all of that rings hollow because empty by design is still empty. And at the end of the day, Civil War is a visually impressive exercise in saying nothing.